ごめん仲直りのハグ近いの嫌だったよね嫌だなんて言ってないあ俺のこと好きなの Truly, I don't even know where to start this episode. We're nine weeks into the dangers in my heart, which is incredibly crazy just from that fact alone. The fact that we are nine weeks into this amazing anime and it seemingly stole my heart. Like, I don't know if my heart can take much more of this, it's just so good. I've told you guys basically from episode number one that there's just something so inherently special about the dangers in my heart. And this episode not only kind of tore out my heart, but then also put it back together. But it was better when it made its way back in than when it left and fell and crumpled. Like, there was th this got me to yell out, take a hint. Don't say that. Go after her. Hug her. Like, I had all these different emotions and moments this episode. And that is. The epitome of really great writing. I think, you know, as far as really well written anime this season, I think the best written anime this season is Skip and Loafer, but right behind it, I think it's a dangerous in my heart. Now, that doesn't negate my enjoyability of a lot of the other anime. It's just, I'm talking about like purely well written, well coordinated, well directed scenes. I just think that these two anime are kind of a cut above the rest. Now, does it mean that I'm not enjoying maybe another one more? I think my my most enjoyed anime this season is Cheat Skill Anime, but it's not winning any awards, probably for anything. But I still enjoy that one the most this season. But then right under it, I think, you know, it's really hard for me to decide, but I think the dangers in my heart might be the next one that I'm looking forward to the most. I'm just like, I just want to see Ichikawa and Yamada just get together already. You know what I mean?、Uh, but this episode was just so good and so incredible. And、um, it just, just so much happened. And the, the other、uh, momentous moment of incredibleness that this episode had was the fact that they took up. The entire outside of the OP, they took they took up the rest of the runtime, so they didn't cut off early for the ED. They took up the rest of the runtime so much so that, like, the ending, you know, had Yamada, you know, looking at her phone, say, a Yasumi, you know, say goodnight or whatever into her phone, and that's where the episode cut off, and that's where the episode ended. And that was right at, at the end of the runtime for this week's episode. and That's always another good indication of a really well coordinated, well directed, well use of or good use of time during a, a duration of an anime. I think that's really when they knock it out of the park. So, you know, I'll, I'll cover the most things, but like this episode, I think just absolutely nailed it. I loved every moment of this episode. Again, like I said, this got me to. Yell out so many different expletives, so many different things this episode. I was very vocal. And a lot of times when I'm watching an anime, sometimes I have vocal moments. But for the most part, I have those vocal moments internally. Unless I'm physically reacting to something to put on the internet, I kind of, in those moments, I have my internal thoughts that I vocalize. But for the most part, I keep my, my thoughts yelling internal. But this one got me to at least four or five times say something that's physically out loud. Like, hug her, you effing idiot. So that's where I think this episode kind of was a cut above. So、uh, let's just kind of go from everything else. So, you know, first off, it starts off with Yamada basically trying to do everything in her power to get the line, which is the,、uh, like, a, it's like a WhatsApp thing, it's a texting app. Uh, for your phone, and this is seemingly what most people in, in Asian countries use Japan, China, Korea. They use something called a line app. I don't know why they don't use their internal app, but regardless, they use line because of the different functionalities it has. The fact that it goes via internet, there's no、uh, associated text cost to it, it's all internet based, and it has different features within it, like sending stickers and stuff and emojis. which... Uh, a lot of people really tend to love. I'm not a big sticker fan myself, but hey, I totally get it, if, especially if it's rooted in your society. So basically, she tries to get him to you know, get his line, and she does everything in her power to do so. She fails over and over because he's a big, dumb idiot. And when I say big, dumb idiot, he's a big, dumb idiot in like a 5'1, 5' foot package.、Um, then she comes up with the idea, or her friend, Moe, 
Moe Moe Chan, Moe Moe Chan, uh, comes up with the idea to actually, you know, get you know, get a boyfriend this this winter break, and she wants to exchange her line with all the boys in in class. Uh, Yamada immediately jumps on that idea because she's like, this is my in to have an excuse from somebody else's idea to go and get uh, Ichikawa's line. Uh, and she doesn't hide this whatsoever. She beelines it. I mean, literally, like, she beelines it over to uh, Ichikawa, and uh, instead of her getting it, she gets Moe to go over there. And Moe, you know, she doesn't get her to go over. Moe goes over there from volition. And her friend calls Ichikawa Ichi, which I think was really cute. Uh, and I've had this see, I've had this suspicion for a while, and I feel like this episode kind of solidified it that uh, Yamada's friend may actually secretly also like Ichikawa for whatever reason. I don't know what it is, but, you know, she made it a point to get his line. And they seemingly didn't get any other lines from any other boys throughout the scenes. So, really, it was only Ichikawa that they actually got his line for. So, they got his line, or, you know, uh, Moe got Ichi's line. Uh, and this caused Yamada to then get mad at him and get jealous because he, he gave away his line to this girl, Moko, or Moe. But he, but she, he didn't give it to her. So I thought that was a whole entire thing. And then you know, obviously Moe and Ichikawa have a moment too. She's like, "Oh, you, you, you see Rem from, uh, you have Rem's photo from ReZero. I'm actually a Ram fan. My brother's a big otaku. Blah blah blah." So they have this level of of thing there. So I have a feeling that before the end of the season, something will come up with this friend actually liking Ichikawa, which I think is is weird and and cool and refreshing. I think that's really cool. Uh, then, the, like I said, the rest of the episode just kind of continues on her trying to find a way to to kind of make it happen. Uh, long story short, you know. Uh, there's a moment that happens in the library, okay, and uh, Yamato's being pursued by this this one guy who, who caused that bike scene earlier on in the season, and he's been uh, going after Yamada pretty much nonstop. And, uh, you know, they, they two girls of, of his friends approach Yamada to try and kind of investigate and stuff for this dude for whatever reason. Uh, probably because they like him as well, but they try to investigate if she has a boyfriend or not to basically go back to him and say, hey, she's taken, bro, give the F up. Uh, and while she's there, Ichikawa's there as well. He kindly steps away a little bit so these girls could talk to her. And another really cool moment happens is she, Yamada, makes it a point to say, I don't have a boyfriend, I don't have a boyfriend. And she yells, I don't have a boyfriend, looking right at Ichikawa, like locking eyes. And the other girl catches what she's putting down. I'm like, oh my God, like that's the guy that you, that's the guy? Uh, and she runs over and goes and gets the other guy that's interested in Yamada. And that's a whole ordeal. And she brings him back, and uh, at this point, Yamada pins Ichikawa and kind of gets in a position to where it looks like they may be kissing, and that kind of gets him off off her tail. Uh, but this causes our boy Ichikawa to go into a big spiral. Our boy is, he is, you know, incessant about creating um, things that don't exist. He has a big, uh, what do they call it, uh, chinibio kind of like thought process to him. He creates a lot of fictionality in his mind. And from this, even though he knows Yamada like backwards and forth, he's been spending the most time with her, he still comes up with this complex thing that she's been using him just to get this guy away or whatever, which is not the case. Like, why would she do all these actions, all these things that have occurred throughout the season? Why would she do all this just for just to kind of like, like she's not a strategist like that. So anyways, he begins to avoid her. And because of that, he avoids for like two or three days, I guess. You know, doesn't come to the library in class, doesn't say hi. Uh, and this pisses her off. And she like begins to chase him. When I say chase him, I mean, he tries to like walk away fast. He, they are almost sprinting at this point, and she catches him. And she was like, why are you mad at me? <laughs> uh, and long story short, uh, you know, this causes her to cry. And he's like, no, no, he freaks out. He's like, I can't believe I was thinking all these things. I know her. And this is, I know that she wouldn't do these things I thought that she did. Uh, and he tells her, he, she hugs him. 
Uh, and that becomes a whole thing. And she's like, I'm so sorry for being close. He's like, I don't mind. I actually like it. They go into a corner and they hug more. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, my heart can't take this. My heart can't take it. Uh, and then ultimately, you know, she uses all these emotions and everything and walking home together. She finally just says, give me your line. Like, now. Give me your line. So he gives in finally. They text back and forth. And the episode ends. And like, oh, my God. I was like, my heart. Like, I just I can't take this cuteness overload. Of just this awkwardness, this awkwardness and this cuteness of them navigating through it. It's just so, so, so good. All right, that's me, guys. This episode was fantastic. I absolutely enjoyed it. They crushed this episode. I can't wait to see what comes next for them both. We're going to get probably a really cool date uh, for Christmas Eve or whatever. So I can't wait to see that when that happens next episode. But yeah, this is this is awesome. Can't wait to see more. All right, my friends, I'm gonna see you guys next weekend. Have a great rest of your weekend. For those in the West, have a great Memorial Day weekend. Or whenever you're watching this, just stay classy, stay you, be awesome. Peace out.